Uh, we'll be looking today a bit about the latest balance changes. Today a bit about the latest balance changes. Uh, also, we're looking at alternative builds for Scourge because of the balance changes. Yeah, that's basically all we'll be doing today in the training. So, in case you guys have not noticed, uh, there have been uh, quite a few balance changes recently. Also, hot fixes. So, first of all, they changed how the shade uh, functions again. So, uh, it used to be that the shade, in the beginning when Scourge came out, it used to be that you hit around yourself and then around the shade as well. Uh, they changed it so that you only hit around your shade because Scourge was really strong. And then they, they brought it back. So, if you play Scourge nowadays, your skate skills, so F2 to F5 will hit around yourself and your shade again. Which is arguably a terrible balance change, but fine. Um, because it was overpowered, they hotfixed it again, and now Scourge is in a worse position than it was before. So, what they did was they changed how many people you can hit with your shade. So, you used to be able to hit five, uh, with your, five people with your shade, and then also in the latest balance ship, but also hit five around yourself. So you will be able to hit 10 tar targets easy. If you run small shades, you will be able to put three shades down and hit 20 people. Now that was a bit strong. So they changed it to that you can only hit two people with it. So each shade you put down can only hit two people and two people around yourself as well. Because this, the Scourge is a way lower target cap and yeah, it will also do quite a considerably less amount of damage. However, if you do want to play Scourge, you can still play it. You just need to spam your F1 quite a bit more, but we'll get to that in a bit. So yeah, the, the, the main thing is that you barely... Well, you can still hit with your Shade skills, but you hit considerably less. So because of that, there are other builds that have come... Well, not into the meta as of yet, but will probably soon be. Uh, alternatives to Scourge. Uh, different, oh, another change by the way in the latest patch was they added the trade called Blood Bank. It's in the Blood Magic uh, trade line. Now, Blood Bank will give you in Zerg fights or Blood fights, will basically give you a 11k barrier almost constantly because of the trade. But since you generally don't need it, I would not advise running it. It is a really strong trade, but you don't need that much extra barrier to be able to survive, in my opinion. Especially on Scourge or Reaper. You can run it on Corneco, but we'll get to that in a bit. So, the alternatives to Scourge. Scourge still has quite a few things going for it. For example, Scourge still has Breach. Breach uh, doesn't have a target cap. So when the enemy is pushing into you, you can, you can just drop this and basically the entire enemy Zerg will get stripped of all their boons and will, well, hopefully die. So it's really powerful tool to stop melee pushes. You also still, as a Scourge, you have your Sand Flare. Sand Flare will still give five people a barrier. And in this case, like, around 5k barrier. However, because, like, the, the Shade skills only hit two people, I... It, it's... You, you, can, you can still run Scourge, but you can also... Ideally, you would have also some, some Reapers, for example, next to you, some Scourges. Because the Scourges are still the king of the Corrupts, if you the Necro specs. So I will uh, share the build I'm running at the moment. There's one one trait that's different from before, and <laughs> that's Desert Empowerment. So this trait you didn't use to run before, because you you would basically already have barrier from your F3 and F5 on five people. Or F5 maybe, but because you were dropping on the enemy. But uh, in this this new upcoming meta, probably you will. More likely, more likely than not, but shades on on allies when you push. So the reapers will be pushing in front with the firebands and stuff, and you will be dropping shades on the enemy where your allies are. So you'll be giving your allies more barrier with as an empowerment. For the rest, the build is pretty much the same. You can uh, you can swap one of the wells out for well of darkness. That's something that's been coming up, but I don't know if it's worth it. Um, yeah, that's. Pretty much all the scourge changes at the moment. You still run scepter focus and uh, sorry, scepter dagger and axe focus. Yes, yeah. the scourge hasn't changed that much. Just that you hit less people with your shades. 
Any questions so far? Otherwise, we're gonna continue to Reaper. I'm learning a lot. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Um, Reaper, then. I will link the build in a second. This is the Reaper build I'm running. However, there are variations. So, I will be explaining the variations in a little bit. But first, what does Reaper offer that Scourge does not? Reaper offers significantly higher spike damage. And that's mainly in the Reaper Shroud that you offer spike damage. However, the downside of that is you have a lot less strip potential than Scourge. So you will you will run probably less than half of the strips that the Scourge would get, for example. Also, of course, you don't give barrier, which Scourge does as well. So you you trade sort of utility and strips for damage within the Reaper's case. So ideally, you would have a squad that consists of Scourges and Reapers, in my opinion, at the moment. However, there are alternatives for Scourges strips, such as Spellbreaker and Chrono, but I guess we'll get into that some other time. When eventually we'll have a Spellbreaker or Chrono Mancer training. So, Reaper is arguably more difficult to play than Scourge. Scourge, you can stay safe most of the time behind your tag. However, as Reaper, you need to be in melee shroud to actually do damage. And your melee shroud is or your, yeah, your melee shroud is Reaper shroud. That's F one. If you go into F one, your Reaper shroud will be your life force. So you can't, or you don't use life. Uh, you don't lose your health pool while in Reaper form. And this skills we'll talk about in a bit. But when you when you go for a melee push, it's you want to be in Reaper shroud, basically. Oh, I forgot by the way, the weapons you generally run are Axe, Focus, and Greatsword. But you can also swap either of the set out for Staff. Um, just make sure you run this straight Soul Marks. If you run Staff, it either works. It doesn't really matter. Um, so you may have noticed that in the Reaper build, I run three wells. Now, three wells might not be ideal for everyone. So if you have a bad fireman, for example, that doesn't always provide the right stab, you would swap one of the wells out for a stun break, such as this stun break. It's on 25 second cooldown, so it's it's not that long compared to other stun breaks. And you can, yeah, whenever you need it, you can just stun break out of a stun and hopefully survive. Most of the times you might need stun break, but if you have a, if you have a good firebrand, you don't need it. I mean, if you, if you know where you need to be and how to dodge the like enemy spike, you won't need it. That's why I run three wells, but you can swap one of the wells out for your all weaklings, the skill. That's completely fine. Um, another thing with the utility skills, uh, the elite I'm running at the moment is chilled to the bone. However, you can also run lich form. But keep in mind, with Lich Form, as an elite skill, you, you the main damage comes from your 1-1-1 one, one, one skill. So Rending Claws. It does like, I think it hits between 5 and, and like 12k or something, if you crit. Which you generally will. The other skills are pretty meh. However, the 1-1-1 one, one, one skill on, Re on Lich Form is a projectile. So it can get reflected very easily. And if it gets reflected, you can very easily kill your own Zerk. So, to be safe, you can, if you're not sure if you can get, like, your auto attacks around reflex or it can actually hit the enemy with it, I would advise running chill to the bone instead, since it's more reliable to hit. Just use it inside a friendly bubble, so you can actually stun people. Yeah. Uh, any questions about utility skills so far? Otherwise, we continue. Right, let's continue then. Not grab the nine, yeah? What? You don't run Spectral Grasp. You don't. Because it's, it'll, it'll get reflected in Bluff Fights and you die instantly. So, I wouldn't advise it. Yeah, just use your Greatsword 5 pool. 
It's you can also use your great for five pull up walls. You can pull people off ACs or entirely off the wall as well. It's less range than Spectro Grasp, but to be fair, you don't really run Spectro Grasp anyway. So, and if you run Great Sword, yeah, spamming uh, using the Fisco can be quite good to pull like enemies out of enemy zergs. So you can easier easy to spike them down. For the traits for Reaper, we have uh, Great Sword X and Focus is what I run. But you can also swap either weapon set out for staff. I would not run Warhorn. Uh, Reaper traits. You run Spite, uh, Soul Reaping and Reaper. For Spite, you run, well, from the first three, you, you only have this one that's really viable. The other two don't really do much for you. Um, for the second trait, uh, for the second three traits, you can run either of these two. I prefer Awaken the Pain because you get considerably more power and you generally have a lot of might in fights, so you get way more power and hit for way more. Yeah, Lesser Spinal Shiver is kind of okay, but it's on a 16 second cooldown and it does quite a, it doesn't do that much damage. Um, I leave the, I pulled this guy out by the way with the background noise. Oh, okay, I muted him anyway. Uh, I just pulled him out. Can okay. I Thank you. Uh, for the last three traits on Spite, you can run either of these two, Close to Death or Spiteful Spirit. I generally would advise you to run Spiteful Spirit because it's 10, uh, 10 boon corrupts spread over five targets, which generally, when you enter Shroud, you are generally near the enemy, so you will hit this regardless, and having more boon corrupt is always good, especially when you're about to spike. For the Soul Reaping trait line, from the first three traits, you can, to be fair, you can run either of the three. Um, hang on. So either of these three, you can run, uh, only run the second one. So soul marks, only run that one if you run staff. Uh, what is this? I would advise you to mix Awaken the Pain with Close to Death or run Chill, Death and Spiteful Spirit. I mean, I run Awaken the Pain and Spiteful Spirit. It, it both works. Yeah, yeah, but close to death is not going to be proc that much because most of the time the enemies will be full health or dead. So it, you, you can run it, don't get me wrong, you can really run it, but I would just prefer to run Spiteful Spirit because you, when you're about to go or when you're going to Shroud, you boon corrupt around you and then afterwards you usually spike, so the enemy will have less boons. That's why I prefer to run Spiteful Spirit. But yeah, both are valid options. Uh, for the for the soul reaping trade lines from the first three you can run either three um i prefer speed of shadows because when you're in a tough situation you can just go into shroud it removes immobilize it removes freeze it removes cripple and then you're good again but if you run staff you obviously run soul marks and if you don't have problems with conditions you can run unyielding blast which it, your one one once going reperform will then apply vulnerability which is a very good thing um, from the second three traits, there's only one that you can realistically run. It's Soul Barbs. It's just it gives you extra damage when you go into Shroud. It's just something you keep in mind when you go into Shroud. You deal ten percent extra damage. For the last three traits, there's again just one that you can run. Death Perception. Uh, when you go into Shroud, you gain thirty-three extra percent crit chance and plus three hundred ferocity. So, I will talk about a bit about this in the in a bit but yeah uh, from the reaper trade line you can from the first three trades you can run either of the first three so either of these is fine i would generally advise you to run augury of death if you have two or more shouts so if you have for example your heal shout your ad shout and a stun break shout i would advise you to run that trade otherwise you can just run chilling nova Relentless, relentless pursuit you don't really need because you already have a uh, speed of shadows from soul reaping but if you don't run that soul reaping trait you can take relentless pursuit um from the second i would generally yeah just run one trade yeah you can run relentless pursuit if you run stuff 
for example, if you need it. Uh, from the second and uh, three traits, you will take Soul Eater. It just has, it's more damage. More damage is good. So, yeah. And from the last one, you run Reaper's Onslaught. Uh, basically, this skill gives you gives you Frosty and Quickness while in Reaper's Shroud. So you gain extra Frosty from Soul Reaping, 300, and you gain extra Frosty from Reaper's Onslaught. So if you're in a Reaper's Shroud, you gain plus 600 Frosty, which is a lot. So, uh, for example, I go from 228% to 268%, so I gain 40% critical damage increase, which is quite big. Any questions about trade so far? Otherwise, we continue. Continue. Yeah. Just. Uh, you can swap any well well out, but it, it depends on what what the group needs. Like if you need more strips, uh, drop one uh, drop well of darkness. If you need um, if you need less, or you you have. Yeah, if, if you have enough damage but need more strips, you you drop out well of darkness. But if you have enough strips but you need more damage, you drop out well of corruption. For example, it just depends on. What's what's needed? Yeah, there may well be enough uh, be a situation where we have enough strips, but uh, these are the the Reaper skills in Reaper Shroud. So generally, when you when you engage, actually before you engage, you you most commanders or most commanders these days will drop wells before you actually engage. This is a good thing. You drop wells, and then ideally. You would go immediately into Reaper Shroud. Because when you go into Reaper Shroud, you gain extra crit chance. So you're crit capped. And you gain 600 extra ferocity. So your wells hit like a truck. And usually the, the commander will then also call for melee engage. At least from my experience. And what you want to do in Reaper Shroud is when the, the, when the commander is committing to a push, you, you, you press your two skill to engage on the enemy. You can go a bit in front of attack, but not too far. Keep that in mind. You press the skill 3, which gives you damage reduction and stability. And then you, you press your 4 skill. It's, your 4 skill is spin to win. Some people call it helicopter, some people call it spin to win. It's whatever. It's it's where most of your damage comes from. And you can also use skill 5 um, when you want. It's your name, it's very possibly, yeah. Uh, you can also go 3-2 first, but generally when you're going to push, you already have stab from your firebrand, so you will just use 2. And then you use 3, so you you make sure you have stability before you cast 4, because you don't want that skill to be interrupted, ideally. Um, no, I wouldn't. You should have enough life force by, um, by far. And if you if you don't have enough life force, you can just summon some bone minions before a fight and explode those, and then you gain life force from them. You don't explode them. You do. You summon yeah. the bone minions and you swap it into well again. You can also you can do either. Uh, yeah, if it gets interrupted, you blame either your firebend or yourself for not popping the three skill, because you should have three stacks of stability from the three skill, and that should not get converted that easily. So yeah, basically when you wanna when you're gonna push, or the commander will call for wells, you drop your wells, go immediately into Reaper Shroud for the extra damage on your wells, and then when you're sure they're gonna melee push, press two skill, then three, then four, and then also possibly five if anybody's still alive. And if you still have life force left, then you just spam one one one. One your one 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 skills does a lot of damage in Reaper Shroud. Okay, uh, weapon skills for the Reaper. Uh, I'm not going to talk about X-Focus right now because, well, you probably already know what X-Focus does. So, the Greatsword on Reaper. The the main skills you want to keep an eye on is everything, basically. The the one 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 skill is meh, it's fine. The two skill, Gravedigger, can hit for quite a lot, but you generally don't want to use it that much because it has quite a long cast time. The main skills you want to be using while in Greatsword, or you want to focus on, are skill 4 and skill 5. 
Skill 4 is sort of a, a mini breach. So you drop it on the floor, it's quite small, but it gets bigger over time and it corrupts all boons uh, from the enemies. So if you see the enemy push onto us, you drop this, basically. So the enemy will have no boons left to push. Um, mm. when, you're, when you're trying to catch some enemies, for example, or you want to pull some people out of the out of the enemy circle you use skill 5 grasping darkness this will this is not reflectable it cannot it's only 900 range so it's not the biggest along this pool but you can pull five people with it if they don't have stab it's a really useful skill to just pick up some people you generally want to combo this with skill 3 so you pull with five and then immediate use three so when they reach you you hit them with the three skill which hits for like 10k i believe yeah they generally hopefully die the two skill you can use to cleave, but yeah, it's it's up to you. You don't have to, and yeah, you you, you want to use your axe to to corrupt the enemy, of course, and axe focus. What skills corrupt? What? What skills corrupt? The three skill and axe focus, five skill, and you also have when you go into shroud F one, you corrupt, and your well of corruption if you run it. Good, you have to cover it. Because a lot of people don't know that the third skill and the fifth skill of that weapon set actually corrupts. Yeah, but I talked about it in the in the scourge, in the last training. I'm not gonna go over stuff I already did. Not that this monster for last training. Well, they can watch the video. Fuck that. But yeah, okay, fine. You corrupt when you use X three. So this skill, unholy feast. It's five corrupts on uh, sorry, one corrupt on five people, so five corrupts total. And when you see somebody that's that's like slacking behind the enemy tag, you can use Spinal Shivers on them. It will usually deal a lot of damage and remove three of their boons, so you can kill them easy. It generally hits for like 8 or 9k, so if you have like two two Necros using this on somebody, they will almost certainly die dead. Yeah. When you see enemy bubble move to us and bubble on us, use Unholy Feast or Spinal Shivers on them. Or, in the worst case, you can also use Nightfall if you're in Great Sony and you don't have Weapon Swap. Just make sure he, he gets corrupted. The, uh, on the Warrior, right? Yeah, the, the Warrior bubbles, yeah. Those are the, the most important ones you need to corrupt. After that is enemy people that you're gonna spike. A Scrapper can also corrupt, but it's less reliable. Um, any questions so far about Reaper? Just just corrupt as much as you can if you don't have anything else to do. Staff is viable if you only pirate ship. So if you can't melee engage and you just stay at 1200 range, you run staff. But generally when when the commander sees that they have like 10 or maybe more reapers in their squad, they are not going to stay at range, they're, they're going to melee push. With, with the tag, always. You stay with the tag, you push with the tag. You can go a bit further than the tag when you're when you're about to melee engage. But yeah. After that you come back to the tag again. No, not in front of the tag. Behind the tag. But when when the when the commander calls for a push, for example, you can um reperform two two into them. And then move back to the tag again. Yeah, that's okay. Just, just don't be in far in front of that because you will die any more questions about reaper otherwise we continue to corneco yeah you, you don't go in front of the blob generally you, you can go a little bit when you're about to push but j you just stay on tag You push, you push wherever the command in, where the friendly commander pushes. Yeah, yeah, we're talking about core necro too. Just a little bit, because most of it is the same as with Reaper. Okay, let's continue to core necro. This is something I run on Core Necro. You can, uh, you can run other stuff with Core Necro. So Core Necro is 
in my opinion, basically, it sits right between Reaper and Scourge. So it corrupts way more than Scourge. Uh, sorry, than Reaper, but it does less damage than Reaper. And then same, it does more damage than Scourge, but it corrupts less than Scourge. And it doesn't have barrier, obviously. So, with Core Necro, you can basically run every trade line. It, it, it's up to you, whatever you need. Uh, I would advise. Um, generally, I would say, yeah, Scourge is better, but Core Necro is easier. So, you would... If you run Core Necro, you would run uh, X Focus and Scepter Dagger, usually. So the two trade lines you will need are at least Spite and Curses, and that's Spite uh, one two three, and Curses two two three. The last trade line that you would want to run is optional. You can run Soul Reaping for more damage. You can run Death Magic for more tankiness. You can run Blood Magic for the for the new Blood Bank trade line, for this trade line. Um, but yeah, generally you can run everything. It just depends on what you need. However, I would not advise running Core Necro. You can, it does quite a bit of damage, but the Reaper Shard 111, so the skill is a projectile. It gets reflected, just like Lich Form projectile. The 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 good skills though from the from the Reaper, uh, sorry, the Necromancer Shroud are Life Transfer and Tainted Shackles. So skill four and five are the main, uh, and skill two as well, obviously, because you run curses. Those are the main skills you want to run on Core Necro, if you run Core Necro. But if you run Core Necro, I would advise you to either, you can run it, but Reaper and Scourge are better. So just keep that in mind if you want to run Core Necro. Um, I think that's pretty much it for the new changes. So just to summarize a bit, Scourge is sort of still viable. You can run Scourge, just run the Death of the Power trait. You can also run Reaper. Um, the Reaper is much stronger in melee engages, but you need to actually melee engage for it to have any effect. And yeah, yeah, you have way higher spike damage and overall damage as Reaper compared to Scourge. But yeah, Scourge offers obviously barrier and more strips, so. Um, any questions? About the changes or about... Um, oh. runes... Generally, uh, I would run Scholar on Reaper and Eagle on Scourge. Because Reaper, you, you generally are full HP when you go into Reaper Shroud which will keep your Scholar Rune proc, so you're about 90% health for extra damage. And Scourge is less reliable in that, in that uh, case. And I would run Eagle on, on Scourge. Just be, yeah. Uh, for gear, you would, as a Reaper, you can run full Berserker, for example, but you will be crit capped. So if you run full Berserker, you are, I believe you're at like 50% crit chance. And generally in fights you will have Fury, so that's 70%, plus Death Perception from Soul Reaping, which means you're at 103%. So Full Berserker is fine, but you can swap some pieces out to Valkyrie, so that you have 47% crit chance uh, without Fury. If you have 47%, you will be right at the mark for your 100% crit chance in Shroud. And Sigils, you can pretty much... Yeah, you, you, can run, you can run a stacking sigil bloodlust, for example. You can run force for extra damage. You can run energy or stamina. It's it's up to you what you need. Uh, if you run chill to the bone and greatsword, you can also run absorption, for example. So you get more strips. But the I don't think uh, there is actually a reaper build on GW2 Mists. If you go to that website, uh, I I think it's linked in in FSP Discord somewhere, I'm not sure where, but it's linked somewhere. There you can see like an overview of the builds and they also have a Power Reaper test build. That that also shows they, they, they run Force and Bloodlust and Vision apparently. I don't agree with Vision, but yeah. It's... Oh, they also run Staff apparently. 
yeah, generally you you run something that increases your damage. So you run force or bloodlust or yeah. So this is what I run, for example. So I run bloodlust and absorption on uh, on one weapon set and force and absorption on the other. If you don't, if you can survive without the, what do you mean shit skin? Rude. Uh, if you can survive without the extra dodges from like energy or stamina, you can take that. Otherwise, you just replace the absorption with energy or stamina, whatever you need. Surviving is the most important thing. Keep that in mind. After that, you do damage. Um, any other questions? Are you just gonna be running Reapers now? Um, just one. Have... Um, I think there was once uh, a meta for Reapers, like uh, a chill Reaper or something? Yeah. Is it same? still the same? Um, sort of. And it's probably for the first question uh, somebody else asked. I don't think it's, it's going to be only Reapers. Um, but Reaper is general. It's it's quite a good thing to run because you do quite a big spike damage. You do a lot of damage. You usually even do more than revs if you if you can melee engage, and you still provide some strips, but not a lot. So you ideally you would have um, a mix between scourges and Reapers. And the the chill reaper that was, I think it was based on a trait. The, I think it was chilling nova. But the only thing is chilling nova now has an eternal cooldown. It didn't use to before, I believe. So it's 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 more difficult to actually do because of the internal cooldown. When this didn't have an internal cooldown, you could just chill everyone. But since they changed that, it's not really possible anymore. You still have some chills with, well, darkness, for example, or chill to the bone if you run that. Or if you run the trade, you get a chill on five targets every 10 seconds. But it's, yeah, it's, it's slightly different than the chill reaper from before. <laughs> 